Hey guys, and welcome to the latest edition of the Young Team, our model FC save. You join us not long after the closure of the transfer window. It's still a, a normal end of August, start of September closure for Scotland, so we get a bit longer than English clubs. Was going to do Hibs, but due to the initial forum against Hibs, I kind of decided we'll do the Let's Play against Aberdeen, because I think we'd lost something like six or seven straight against the Berlin, and I was expecting the same. And you can see in the top corner how that went down. But first and foremost, before we go through our schedule, we'll just kind of click on and see how the clubs have, around the SPFL have brought in. Our own other signing has been Yaha Posaku. Can play on the left, can play on the right. This gives us an extra option when we go to play with wingers, knee comes, and a free transfer following release from Adel Den Haag. In terms of outs, just a couple of people out in loan, likes of John Stewart, Ross Stewart, Cole Lonsdale. Uh, the more senior players also managed to somehow send me and Bristol to Dunfermline just to try and get them some goals and Curtis made the Bristol Rovers try to sell them, couldn't do it, so loan spells and hope they impress, you can sell them on. Rangers have had an interesting one as of course they will just go through the bigger signings, so 6.75 million for Robin Quaison. Interesting signings as well, bringing in Sam Vokes from Stoke, Joe Lewis from Aberdeen, free transfer of Alex Pritchard. And then a few other guys in there that could maybe do a job. Only one big out, and that's Connor Goldson, a fee up to 7.75 million to Norwich City. St Johnson, with a free transfer purchase of Bruce Anderson from Aberdeen. Nice free purchase in there of good SPFL players like Salim Kelly and Calvin Miller are in from Livingston and Cali Thistle, respectively. Which also sees Solomon Koulibaly and Rory McKenzie in, as well from Partick and Hibernian. In terms of outs, Obviously, we signed Scott Tanzer. They lost Sandra Clark to Aberdeen, and they've also lost Scott Tennant to Arps. St Mirren, Brian Williamson's in from Dunthermon. A lot of free transfers in there. Stephen May from Aberdeen was an interesting one, and Regan Poole, former Manchester United youngster. And in terms of out, just Chris Kane making the venture to Inverness is one that stands out. Aberdeen, a lot of ins. And a few outs, obviously we've documented all the outs previously. But in terms of the ins, the purchase of Daniel Mackay, the promising youngster for Inverness, is in. Should be a steady striking option or winger for them. Olsen Manfana is in, 900k, a bit raw. But there's certainly a few skill sets there that can certainly benefit them. I was going to say something they can work on, but he's 27, so probably not. Apart from that, you're looking at Kuhn. Menshkov that we have at Leeds. They also have Scott Brown in a free transfer. Uh, obviously Richard Tate we know about. They actually brought in James Scott as well after we let him go. That's an interesting one. It'd be interesting to see if he plays much. Uh, Eamon Brophy as well. So some really interesting signings there. Ostergaard I've seen play for Rangers at times so there could be someone could be a player in there. Air United again with another one with some interesting ends. Bringing in Tom Aldred after he left, left us. They brought in Fraser 5A, Stephen Boyd, Michael Harron, to name a few. And yeah, a couple of decent loan signings in there as well. Robbie Gotts, we also had when we were managing Leeds. Just losing Josh Kerr to XR is only one that's left for a fee. Celtic were busy. Yaman Vogel from Bayern Munich. Wesley Hoyt is coming from Applewell. And Ryan Gold for 1.5 million from Sporting. The big sale for Celtic, if we can find it, Jordan Lukaku, a fee up to £17 million. Pound to Wolves. Apart from that, a couple of loans, uh, and no doubt of a few people that they've released as well. And they got Grant Hanley off their wage bill. Dundee, interesting. Alan Martin coming in there. And not really many names there that I'm too familiar with, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they do in terms of how it's just a couple of loans. And a free transfer departure of Cammy Kerr. He goes to Ross County, which is interesting. So they're, I think they're in the championships. Quite interesting that they've let him go. He usually develops into somebody pretty decent. On to Hamilton. Again, it's just a lot of foreigners they bring in. They just seem to pluck one for these kind of places and they do well. So no players there that really stand out. We'll obviously see over time when they end up playing well against us. Then Falami might be one. But yeah, just interesting. Hearts. In terms of fees, Shandon Baptiste. They actually took the signing of Grady de Ganga ahead of us, which was annoying because we'd used our five loans or we'd have had them. Uh, Scott Tennant from St. Johnson, 
Tom Pierce could be an interesting one. Someone we also had at Leeds. And Jamal Blackman on a loan from Chelsea outs. Include Andy Irvin to Rafe. Arnold Jim to Jaguarola in Poland. And of course, yeah, Jordan Spence in there as well. So that's interesting. Hibs. Not spending a lot of money compared to usual. They've brought the likes of Connor Ronan. Um, Sears and Ali Crawford's a decent signing as well. And no real massive departures, just a good few people out in loan. Kilmarnock, Luke Berry in on loan from Oxford. Craig Tanner, formerly of us. Theodore Gebre Selassie was an interesting one, as was the free transfer of Tommy Ball, Dominic Ball. In terms of how it's just Eamon Brophy to Aberdeen. So you'll see here a lot of the sign. It's just basically frees and loans, which you'll get across the board. So it's been a disaster since you last joined us um, in the 3 3 game against Dundee. We were unlucky against Celtic and Mikey Johnson goal, giving them the win. Then an absolute disaster away to Hamilton, just utterly shocking from us. Mikael Miller getting two, the first and the last. Ben Flamami getting the goal to make it 2 0. Charles Dunn gives a chance before Ed Garris. Lucas made it 3 1 to the home side. I tried a ridiculously strange tactic against St Johnson, which saw us 4 1 down. Taylor Sheeran opening the scoring. Can gave us a glimmer of hope before Serigoni made it 2 1. Brad Lyons made it 3 1. And then Sheeran made it 4 1 just before half time. Ian Zodgard and Scott Thompson did give us consolation goals, but yeah, it was a bizarre system that just didn't work. So I changed it to the system we played in the second half. So the style of play was the same, but the actual formation, how they lined out, was a little bit different. So we went to Hibs. I expected to get absolutely plummel. You know what I mean? But interestingly enough, you know, a 1 0 win, Scott Thompson with two minutes to go, stealing three points. We mentally see they're getting crowds of 20,000. And that's only less than 1,000 fans for us. So that's how they'll be making good money and able to move a bit more aggressive in the transfer window so that's that's interesting to look at as well for us 11th in the league you can see there it's close though like you know a win and we're kind of back where i expect us to be but we really badly need to sell a few players just to give us that chance to properly invest either that or next maybe need to go with an older team but we just need the younger players to start fulfilling their potential which is a good reason why a lot of the ones that i expect in the first team are out and blown with just really thompson the only one that's stayed the rest are out and loan just to make sure they get first team football on the best position possible. You can kick on and hopefully sell one of these free Cadden, Turnbull and Campbell, just to keep that proper bit of money sitting in the bank that we can go, right, cool, improve youth recruitment, improve youth facilities, junior coaching, and hopefully kick on. But speaking of kicking on, Aberdeen at home, this is the mad tactic we're using. It's now a 3 4 1, 3 1 4 2, sorry. Uh, just really playing a lot of passing and, and really try to play narrow slightly. I know it's contradicting, I've got them as inside wingers, but I've also got them extremely wide. So it's basically to try and ensure they're wide going forward. But when they make that pass, then coming in and then just really compact in the middle of the park once we're out of possession as well. So we'll see how it goes. Against a good hip side, we managed to hang on. Aberdeen might not be so simple, and it will be the same lineup that started that game. Thompson may have been utilised as a late sub, but Ryan Hardy's in his last legs here. Um, if he doesn't really perform here, we'll certainly be looking to, to punt him out the door. Because for a guy that expected to score goal, 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 he hasn't really done it. We kind of need to find that one player that's just going to kick on and score some goals. So here we go, this is it, the match against Aberdeen. You can see they're laying up their 4-2-3-1. They still get Graham Shinney in this. Of course, his pre-contract to Derby wasn't confirmed. Really interesting to see how they do it, and I have no doubt that his men of call will probably try and score against us because of you know the lack of chances they maybe gave him at Leeds. Interesting as well, Richard Tate's on the bench for them. So looking at that, I feel like taking the 500k was probably the best idea that we could have done. So we'll see at the team. We're underdogs. But I know he can do it, and just hopefully we can get a good result here against Aberdeen in front of our home fans, just really kick on with the season. The initial aim every season is always to get in the top six and get a cup run. The League Cup's a disaster. That's already done and over. You want to be good in the league, that's your bread and butter. And hopefully, 
you know, we can get that top six. So I, usually in a model save, and now I'm talking European football, etc. But we've never really had the financial muscle so far here. It's allowed me to get those maybe bolder loan signings that I've had in previous years. Um, so when I was at Mother Road, and if, um, I want to say FM 15 when I won the Champions League. We were very aggressive after three seasons. Like so Connor Wilkinson was coming in uh, with a couple of good new gen signings for uh, likes so of Man United, Man City. But reputation and funds just haven't appeared. We haven't had the players to sell on. Or if we have, they've maybe been too inflated by their value. So maybe Turnbull is worth four million according to the game. But maybe we should be accepting something lower. Maybe a sell on just to try and you know get that money in. A good chance for Turnbull for the free kick. Here's Manfana to Mackay Stephen to Shinny. Here's Coffee. And it's out to Odetayo. He'll run at the inverted winger. And that is the joy when you play a back three. You need Chris Cadden to be a bit deeper there as the inverted winger, but unfortunately, leaves Gary McKay Stephen wide open at the back post. And you see it far too often, maybe it's the way I set my teams up, but one winger crosses and the other winger scores. Oh, Tizmenikov has mugged off Charles Dunn, I think, there. Oh, the bio, and there we go, McKay Stephen. And unfortunately, George Long right into the face of Kun Tizmenikov. And that is 2-0 to the visitors. So again, having a lot of the ball, but not really doing anything with it. So we're going to see the boys to show us something in the second half. I'm going to go a bit more defensive. Chris Cadden's going to play as a wing-back. Regrettably, so will Charles Dunn. So Scott Wright will come off. He's actually one of our better players but because of the tactical reshuffle. I'd rather just have Dunn there than Clark, because Clark can play as a left-back, but for some reason can't play as a wing-back. Dunn can play as that wing-back. So we'll try both of these going forward as well. Uh, and to make it quite adventurous, I'm going to take off Hardy, and I'm going to bring off bring on McDonald. I'm actually going to try a very, very aggressive system here. Will it work? Probably not. It looks just mad, doesn't it? It really does look mad. Campbell in there. See if I can just make him even just like a central midfielder. Support. But we'll try him as two ball winners. Just hopefully they win the ball. We'll see what we can do. Maybe should be dropping Turnbull further forward, eh, further back. But if he can get a chance for maybe 20, 25 yards out, you do expect him to do something and potentially score. So if we maybe get a bit more support going forward, then we'll maybe look at it. See, here's McHugh, Ruhr, back to George Long. Good, good space out in that left hand side, but plays it back to Ruhr. It's a long ball, McDonald. It's just a very, very direct game so far. Dismanikov. That's another ball, and again, sleeping at the back post. This time, Cadden is back, but just completely sleeps. And there you go, Mackay Stephen, 3 0. Wow, absolutely shambolic. So this just shows you what kind of mess. Probably not my fault, you know, the transfer window was not great. Probably relying too much on potential rather on what we've got right now. Uh, and it could be setting us back on this plan. Carry on, here's Turnbull through to Odegaard. There we go, Odegaard. With a powerful finish and assist for David Turnbull. That's why I wanted him further forward. We get a chance? Probably not because Graham Shinney has just literally put the ball through George Long from 30 yards. Well, so that's what we're dealing with. We are probably still too much in transition, and they're at a club that's probably, I'd say, maybe even at their prime, a couple of the signings they've got there. So that's, that's maybe one I need to look at, and maybe need to question my recruitment policy, because it's just been far too much. Let's go younger, younger, younger. We don't have any players at the club that are over 30. And I don't even think we start any that are near 30. George Long's maybe your oldest at 27, maybe Charles Dunn at 28. Here's Zilla, Mackay Stephen. And thankfully, I was waiting for that there, the offside flag from the assistant. We've just, we're just pathetic now. So we're going to take off Karen McHugh and bring on Colin Rosler. And basically just put Can, uh, Campbell as a ball winner. But still an aggressive ball winner. Uh, and we'll just mm, we'll try a Roman playmaker. Just to see what we can do here, but game's done, you know. 
it just shows there's certain teams we maybe play this way against, but I really need to get to the drawing board and hopefully we maybe recruit a bit better. Because the worrying thing is you take out Cadden, Bunn, Campbell and Turnbull. It's a completely different side to what Mother will have in real life and it's well at the time, the recording anyway. And it's certainly come back to haunt us. It's all good having the ball, but we've not done anything with it. And I certainly don't really recall having many highlights for, for Xander Clark to deal with, apart from the goal. So, nice wee touch and play there, but maybe the times were just too expansive. Maybe it's the high line as well, maybe it's as much as it's cool to play expansive football. It's know where you are and make sure you've got the right players in at the right time, which maybe at this point in time we don't. But Charles done, and that just sums it up. His first touch is a header that goes out for a throw in. So, poor episode, poor video. Um, when you get a result like this, and it just shows that you know we're trying to improve, but are we possibly going backwards? We won't finish the weekend bottom of the table, we're four clear out here with the game in hand. Let's hope the mother of world don't go, which isn't good enough, and, and possibly try and chuck me at the door. So, while we hopefully get a turn in fortunes, two trips to Ayrshire coming up, then Rangers at home, St. Man at home. So, hopefully. When you join us, whenever that may be, we're in a better position. So, just watching, much appreciated. Apologies, we're pish, but it's all part of the journey. You can't win every game in a football manager. Some do. It's a bit dodgy. Just watching, much appreciated. Take it easy. Hopefully, see you to the next episode. Cheers, bye.